video from Notes in the Sewing Room. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is all about my Make Nine plans for 2023. So if you are interested in that, then please do stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. As you may be able to see, I've got my Labrador Bentley just here with me as well. So um, he'll probably peek his head up so you can see him in a, a little while, I'm sure. Um, but he's just um, having a little uh, growl at everyone <laughs> who's walking past at the moment. So there we are. But anyway, let's get started. So I've given quite a lot of thought to my Make Nine this year. And I've tried to think about what patterns I've already got in terms of sewing patterns that I've got, you know, in my little drawer of uh, patterns and I've tried to think about fabrics that I've already got and I've tried to think about things that I really really want to make because the thing is with make nine if you are unfamiliar with it it's something that happens over on Instagram people basically choose nine sewing patterns that they hope to sew up in the year ahead and um, I've done this quite a few times before myself and perhaps never really achieved all the nine things I've made some of the things that I've said I was going to make but not necessarily all of them because you know what it's like other patterns kind of pop up and you think oh, I really want to make that now I really want to make that and then you know the original list that you had kind of just goes out of the window somewhere um so this time I've really tried to think about things that will work for, for me and will work for my wardrobe and there'll be things that I really really uh, you know will enjoy making and wearing so some of the things that I've actually made before or the patterns that I've tried before and want to try again, some of the things are new patterns as well. So I hope you enjoy hearing about all the bits and pieces that I've got to share with you. Oh, also, for those of you who are interested, I'll tell you what I'm wearing today. So this is one of my Billy dresses. So Tilly the Buttons Billy dresses. It's got the lovely uh, ruched gathered shoulders and the lovely kind of uh, ruched arms into this lovely cuff section as well. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen this dress before on me if you follow me on Instagram or um, you uh, have seen any of my future videos but I will put in a picture of what it looks like full length as well if you are interested in that one. So the first project I thought I'd tell you about is actually a forget-me-not patterns pattern and it's called the Clementine dress. So this is a dress that I think it's a pattern that's actually been around for quite a while to be honest but it's something that I've been wanting to make for um, ages so I just thought why not let's include it on that make nine list and hopefully I might have the opportunity to actually make this one up. So um, I have got a couple of fabrics in mind that I could potentially use for this project um, which I shall show you in just a minute. A minute. Um, but for now, let me tell you about the dress. It's a PDF pattern that can also be made as a top and also as a dress. And uh, you can print it out at home or you can send it off to a copy shop if you want to. It has princess seams which kind of follow the curve of the body, which I think is, is a really nice feature. The top is a little bit more tailored and the skirt, or should I say not the skirt, the dress is a, a little bit more flowy. The dress looks like it finishes just above the knee and it's got quite a swishy kind of skirt which I think is right up my street so I think I'm going to really enjoy uh, wearing that one. I do like things that are A-line, I think they're quite flattering uh, to my figure. There's also the option of adding your inseam pockets. I'm not sure if I'll do that or not because sometimes I find that when I do add in inseam pockets around the hip area, it can add a little bit of extra bulk around that area. So I'm not sure if I'll do that. I do find pockets obviously like really good and really helpful, but also I don't want that extra bulk around the hip area. So uh, we'll, we'll see on that one. I'm not sure if I'll add those in. There is a choice of uh, neck options as well in terms of the dress. So I think you've got a scoop neck or you've got a cowl neck option. So I like that about this pattern that you have got different options that you can try. There's also a, a few different sleeve options as well, as well. I think you can make a short sleeve or a longer sleeve or perhaps a three quarter length sleeve as well. So yeah, lots and lots of different variations that you can do on this pattern. Um, so I think it's definitely one that I'm going to enjoy trying out. In terms of the sizes, it's available in sizes 28 through to 48. So I'm not sure what sizing um, kind of, I don't know what you call it, kind of convention um, that is. Um, I don't know if it's uh, European sizes, perhaps. I'm not sure. Uh, but when I've actually made um, the Forget Me Not patterns before, I normally make about 34 and I am roughly a UK size 10. So if that's helpful, um, I'm not sure. But that's what I, I tend to make, either a 34 or a 36, depending on um, how fitted the garment actually is. One of the fabrics that I've got that I thought potentially I could um, use for this Clementine dress, I'm not sure if I'll actually have enough of this fabric, but I've had it for ages in my in my box of fabric. So this is a Ponty Roma fabric. As you can see, it's plain pink. Um, so I do love a pink fabric, um, but I think also it'd be nice to have more plain things in my wardrobe. So whether I use this one or not, it's definitely an option for another dress or skirt 
in my wardrobe kind of coming up sometime soon I think um, but yeah this is a lovely one I think I bought it from Sew so Over It a while ago in one of their sales um, but yes it's definitely on my list to use at some point soon whether it's for this dress project or not. So project number two that I wanted to share with you today is actually a project that I've made before and this is another forget me not patterns pattern and it's called the Natalie skirt so I will put in a picture of um, the version that I made previously um, but last time I did the A-line version which is quite a kind of Oh no, actually I made the more um, swishy version. So it's like the more flared version. I think there's two different versions that you can make. There's an A-line version, which is the one I want to try. And then there's also the flared version, which I did last time. So I love the version that I made. I made it in a lightweight denim fabric and I put some denim um, buttons like, you know, the metal kind of buttons down the front, which I really like. I've worn that skirt a lot of times, although I made it in um, a, a fairly light coloured blue um, lightweight denim fabric. And every time I wear that skirt, I seem to get it covered in something. Um, you know, it's like I've, 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 I've got a toddler, so I end up in covered in all sorts of stuff, food stuff and all kinds of things. Uh, but yeah, it just seems every time I wear that skirt, I get covered in, in something or other. Uh, but luckily, um, the things do tend to come off, even the ballpoint pen that I got on there. So thank you if you were one of the people that gave me a tip of um, how to remove ballpoint pen. I ended up spraying some hairspray on there uh, before it went into the washing machine. And that really has worked. And it's lifted the ballpoint pen out of there. So thank you very much. That's two thumbs up from me. I've really enjoyed that little tip. So I'll be keeping that one in mind for the future as well. Um, but yeah, the Natalie skirt is a lovely one. I really want to try the A-line version. So this is actually made for woven fabrics. And I, th I think I'd quite like to have a go at doing another denim version, but perhaps uh, in maybe a slightly heavier weight fabric. And I'd like to do a shorter version than I did last time. So maybe finishing just above the knee rather than um, slightly kind of on the knee or slightly below the knee. I think the last one that I did finished. Now, there are a couple of different waistband options that you can do on this pattern. There's kind of a higher waistband or um, a waistband that actually sits on your waist. So last time I did the fitted waistband that was actually on my waist itself. And I think I'm going to go for that one again, but I'm going to use the, um, the, the fitted waistband from the more flared skirt and use it on the A-line version rather than using the more kind of built up uh, waistband, just because I think that's going to suit me a little bit better. Now this skirt is actually put together using a number of panels of fabric so it's um it's it's not um a scary make or a difficult make or anything like that uh, but it is um it, it does form a lovely shape because of the the lines of, of how you actually put the the pattern together so i definitely recommend this pattern if you've not tried it before but i'm really keen to have a go at doing the a-line version so i thought yes i'm going to use a fabric a, a pattern should i say that i've already got and um, give this one another go so i hope you enjoy seeing what i make when i've made it. Pattern number three on my list today is actually yet another forget me not patterns pattern and it's actually called the viola top. I hope I'm saying that correctly but this one is a little bit of a different kind of knit top to um, versions of jersey tops that I've made before and that's because of the gorgeous neckline detailing. So I will put in some footage of what this actually looks like so you can see what I'm talking about but basically it's got some asymmetric kind of detailing just around uh, the top neck area which I think is really pretty and something that I definitely like to try. I think it has kind of a draped fold that kind of comes down from the neckline and then kind of folds across the body. Obviously I'm not sure exactly because I've not made this pattern yet myself but it just looks really beautiful and something that I definitely like to try and I think it kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone a little bit in terms of how I'm using uh, knit fabrics. So yeah something that be fun to have a go at. There's actually a couple of different neckline options that you can do. There's a collarless version or there's um, the more collared version. The back of the top also is uh, joined with two pieces of fabric by the look of it um, and also has some um, shaping at the back neck I believe. I think this top looks like it'd be perfect for more kind of drapey knit fabric so maybe something like a viscose jersey or maybe a lighter weight cotton jersey or some kind of single jersey. Not sure yet, but I'm gonna have a look through my box of fabrics and see what I've got. I am trying to buy less fabric where I can and kind of use up um, fabrics that I've already got here. Um, I can't guarantee how long that'll last for because I do enjoy buying fabric, um, but um, I am trying to use up bits and pieces that I've got already. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having a go with this one. And in terms of the sizing, this one is available in sizes 28 through to 52. I can see myself wearing this top with a pencil skirt or um, some kind of other high-waisted skirt, something like that. You probably know that I love to wear a skirt, so I'm more of a skirt person than a, than a trouser person. I have got jeans, but I don't tend to wear them very often, to be honest. I'm just not really that comfortable in them. So yeah, I can definitely see myself wearing this top um, tucked into 
something that I've got some kind of skirt option uh, but I think it could be worn casually or into the office or something a little bit smarter. Pattern number four that I wanted to chat to you about today is actually a free pattern which is from Peppermint Magazine. So this one was actually also designed by Forget Me Not Patterns, um, you can see I'm a bit of a fan of theirs, um, but it is actually available from Peppermint Magazine so I don't know if you're familiar with Peppermint Magazine but you've got the option to pay for the pattern or not with, with, with the magazine. So I'm um, just going to have a little look at my notes so I don't tell you uh, any wrong information. So if you want to, you can pay between um, $2 and $20 for the pattern or um, you can opt to pay for it free on this occasion. It just depends on um, what you can afford um, at the moment, uh, but you can um, have, a look, have a look on the website. Just search Peppermint Magazine and put in the uh, Ro Rosal Rosalie skirt and you should be able to find um, the pattern that I'm talking about. But of course, I will put in um, some pictures of what this actually looks like. Um, so this is a gorgeous pattern and I think it's going to be really nice as the weather gets a little bit warmer. So it's actually got an elastic waistband at the back and it's got a flat waistband at the front, which I think is quite a nice feature. Um, it's also got a gorgeous kind of fishtail effect around the bottom, which is slightly up at the front and slightly lower at the back. Um, I just think this would be something uh, fun to try, some kind of different details that I've not had a go at previously. I think it would be really nice in lots of different fabrics, perhaps a cotton pot plane or perhaps a, a more lightweight fabric like a, a cotton a viscose fabric. Um, not sure really, but I think some, some kind of woven fabric that's got a little bit of drape to it, um, but has also got enough structure to kind of hold um, that lovely kind of um, detailing just around the front of the skirt. So I'm really looking forward to having a go at this one. I've downloaded the pattern already, I just need to send it off to be printed, but then hopefully I can have a go at making this one in the very near future. Pattern number five on my list today is actually a pattern that I've also made before, so I will put in a picture of what I look like wearing the previous jacket. But this is a sew over it pattern and it's from one of the capsule wardrobe books, um, which is an ebook, and it was the summer dreaming ebook um, that I bought a while ago. I don't know if it was like a couple of years ago, perhaps, but I actually made the Sorrento jacket, which is um, I made it in a denim fabric, but you can probably make it in a different type of woven fabric if you want to. Um, but I, I love a denim jacket and I've worn the version that I've got loads. So I'd quite like to make an alternative version that I can make over the summer months. And I was thinking that I might like to make one in kind of like a, a pink or a, a lilac kind of jersey fabric. Um, not sure yet, but I need, I need to find something that's suitable. But I would really like to make one. I think last summer I saw loads of people wearing kind of pastel coloured jackets and I was just really jealous because I wanted to make one for myself and I didn't actually have the opportunity to do it and I was going to and then I just never really got around to it in the end. So um, I'm definitely going to have a go at doing it this year and I'm planning on finishing it with some nice jeans buttons down the front, maybe those kind of nice shiny uh, silver ones that you can get. Um, but last time I made my jacket in a size 10. Now for a jacket, I think it came together fairly easily. Um, it probably took me, I made this actually before I had my little boy, so I had a little bit more time in terms of actually uh, making a jacket, but I think it probably took me about maybe a day to make it, maybe um, slightly longer, but um, I'm hoping to kind of spread out <laughs> the making process over, you know, a, a, few, a few days or, you know, a number of evenings to try and get this one done. Um, but I think it would definitely be worth it. Um, it's actually got some lovely details. You can add on pockets if you want to. You can add on some little tabs around the bottom if you want to. Um, there's um, some nice detailing around the finishing of the cuff. So there's, there's, there's lots of... Um, ways that you can have fun with with this pattern if you want to and you can add on as many details or not as you decide. Last time I left off the little pockets around the front um, and I also left off the tabs as well because I felt like I didn't really need them and I was hoping to make it you know as simple a make as I possibly could um, so I would um, suggest the same for you if you just want to make a jacket that's not too complicated but I have seen that people have made this jacket from um, upcycled denim. If you've got old jeans at home or you know old fabric that you could perhaps piece together that will look quite nice together that could potentially work for this project because you have got quite a few smaller pieces um, that you could join together so yeah you definitely got options there anyway so um yes hoping to give this one another go and hopefully what i make is going to look super and i'll be able to wear it over the summer months the next pattern that i wanted to share with you today is a jennifer lauren handmade pattern that i've also had in my stash for a while and i'd like to give it a go so this is the sorrel dress so this is a really nice one. So it's got a bodice that's kind of fitted into the waist and then it's got a kind of A-line skirt. So it's finished with buttons down the front 
and it's got quite a cute little collar um, that I'd like to have a go at sewing. I think this one would be perfect in lots of kind of lighter weight fabrics like a cotton poplin fabric or a linen or something like that. So I'm hoping that I'm going to have something in my stash that will work perfectly for this one. And then I can choose some cute buttons to go down the front as well. This one's available in sizes 6 through to 34 and it's also available in crop sizes A to F, which is really good. Now, this one's actually shaped with double-ended darts around the, the top, um, so the bodice and how it joins under the skirt, which I think is going to add some really nice shape in. I don't know how you describe this dress. I think it would probably be like a shift style dress that's got a little bit of shaping to it. I'm not sure, but... Um, I think it's going to look lovely. I think it's one that I could definitely dress up with some heels if I was going out somewhere nice. Don't very often go anywhere posh, but if I was, <laughs> then that would be nice. Um, or um, I could wear it also with flip-flops or sandals, you know, over the summer months and with a cute cardigan perhaps. So yeah, I've got lots of options there of things that I could wear this one with and I think it would work perfectly um, with my, you know, um, summer weight wardrobe. There's some really nice versions of this dress on the Jennifer Lauren website. So if you want to have a look and I will put in um, some footage of what this looks like as well. Um, but there's a really nice version that was made in a lemon print fabric, which is really nice. There's also one that was made in a navy fabric that's got some silver little dots or little spots on it as well. So um, I think both of those look really lovely and definitely give me a little bit of inspiration of what kind of fabric to use for this one. The next pattern that I wanted to talk to you about is actually another one that I've made previously, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. So this is going to be the Friday Pattern Company Sagebrush Top, but I'm hoping to hack it into a dress. So I've got some gorgeous fabric here, which I was um, given by Minerva. So it's got this gorgeous um, animal print on it, if you can see. I would say they're cheetahs probably on there. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely fabric. As you can see, it's got lots and lots of drape to it. I've probably got two and a half to three meters of this fabric. I've had it in my stash for quite a while. Um, so I really am keen on using this one quite soon. Um, I was thinking that I would make the sagebrush top down to the waist and then perhaps I would add in a channel of elastic and then maybe add a gather skirt onto the bottom, finishing around about my knee area. And if I've got enough fabric, I was thinking I might change the sleeves so that they're not the original sagebrush sleeve, but perhaps um, the sleeve from the normal blouse, perhaps by um, Fiber Mood. So not sure, it really depends on how far this fabric actually goes. But um, I'm looking forward to giving this one a go. And I just thought, as I said earlier in the video, it's nice to use resources that I've already got rather than buying new things necessarily, uh, but kind of using the pattern in a slightly different way. I've made the sagebrush top um, quite a few times just to kind of in its normal form. So it'd be quite nice to um, do this one as a hack and just see how it works out, to be honest. If you've had a go at hacking this into a dress, I'd love to know how you did it. So please do leave me any comments below that you'd like to, uh, because um, that would be really helpful. Pattern number eight that I wanted to mention today is actually the Tilly and the Buttons Marnie blouse and dress pattern. So this is going to be a really lovely pattern to try. I'm a massive fan of Tilly and the Buttons patterns. I always enjoy making her patterns, um, but I've not given this one a go yet, so I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. Now, I'd like to make a dress version, but I'm not sure if I would use um, the pattern exactly as it is in the pattern pack and that's because I think I'd like it slightly more shaping just around the waist area so perhaps I might create um, an elastic channel just around there or perhaps I might add on some ties or something like that again if you have made the dress version and you've done any hacks to it or you've made it a little bit more fitted I'd love to know how you actually did that uh, so do get in touch and let me know the blouse version is gorgeous as well so I definitely want to give that one a try uh, there's lots of different skills in here that I've not had a go at before so you can have a go at doing some pin tucks just around the the top of the bodice area um, there's some lovely collar details um, which will be lovely to try although I'm not too keen about having things that are just too high around my neck to be honest um, I love the shoulder ruffles, so I definitely want to have a go at doing those. Um, the shaping through the sleeve is beautiful. Um, so it's got quite a, a nice wide sleeve that looks like it's uh, fitted around the wrist area. Um, so I think I would definitely love that. So um, I think there's loads of different fabrics that would be perfect for this. I think it just depends on how structured you'd like the ruffle um, detail um, to actually be around the shoulder area. So perhaps if you are looking for more of a drapey look, you could go for more of a, a woven viscose fabric something like that um, but if you are wanting something that's a little bit more structured you go you could go for a quilting cotton or you could go for a linen or um, any other kind of woven fabric that you think would be perfect for this but um, on the Tilly and the Buttons website there are some gorgeous versions and I really like the 
kind of autumnal uh, looking version, uh, which is the, the dress version, uh, which looks like it's got some pretty flowers on it. And I love the kind of brighter kind of pastel top version also that's on there. So I don't know, there's so many fabrics and so much inspiration out there for the Marnie blouse. I've seen some gorgeous versions on Instagram as well. So I definitely want to give this one a go at some point soon. Pattern number nine that I want to make is actually one that I've been wanting to make for ages. And I've pro probably had this pattern in my stash for about six months or so. And it's by Izzo Sew Studio and it's the Revlin Ruffle Dress. So there's loads of different options that you can do for this one, which is always great with a pattern that you've got lots of different choice of things that you can do. So this is a sleeveless dress that's got a lined and fitted bodice. It's got a, um, a gathered skirt, which can be tiered if you'd like it to be, and it's fitted with an invisible zip at the back. It's quite a versatile design because it's got three different length options that you can go for, and also you can decide to have the ruffle detail around the front of the bodice or not. So I quite like having a go at using some of the different features of this pattern. I think I'm going to probably make this in a viscose fabric because I'd like the kind of lightweight um, floaty look on this one. But obviously you could make it in what you would like. I think there's some beautiful um, options on um, the Iso Sew website if you'd like to check those out. Again, I will put in some footage of what that looks like on here as well. Um, I really like the version that Izzy's wearing, which is um, the bright yellow version. I think that's really pretty. Now, this one's actually available as a paper pattern or a PDF, so you can um, have the choice there of what you would like to do. And the fabric, the uh, pattern does suggest using lightweight to medium weight woven fabrics for this one that have got a little bit of drape. So I'm not sure if you've got anything in your fabric stash that would work. Uh, I'm hoping that I have. Uh, I just need to have a little look and see what I've got. In terms of the sizing, this one's available in size 6 through to 34, and that's UK sizing. So I'm really looking forward to having a go at making the Revlin dress at some point in the near future. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed watching my video today and learning about my Make 9 for 2023. Um, I'd love to know what you're planning to make in the year ahead, so do get in touch and leave me a message down below if you'd like to. If you have enjoyed watching today's video, please do hit that like button if you haven't already and um, subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you so much to everyone who does watch my videos week after week. I really do appreciate it. And, um, you know, I, I enjoy reading all of your comments and getting back to you in the comments and everything as well. So, yeah, thank you for getting in touch. It really means a lot. But until next time, I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon. Bye.